Hey, Story, I'll just get the baby off my back and I'll be ready to go. Okie dokie. So, um, our Earth is the strongest experience of space flight. It's stronger than anything else you do. For me, it's the, the strongest experience, Earth. I could spend forever in the window, you know, watching the Earth go by. But the Earth has geography, the Earth has um, coral reefs, there's sand dunes, there's mountains, and oceans, and eddy currents in the oceans. And so, so no question, it's uh, more powerful than, um, than the zero gravity. It's more powerful than looking out to the heavens. Well, there's no doubt, you know, it strengthens the idea of a global community. I don't know whether I got that from space flight, or I'm, I guess it had to have strengthened those ideas of a global community that we have been unable to form. Over the millennia, you know, humans have not desired to establish a global community. They have much preferred to live amongst their own tribes or nationalities. Um, but I guess it's a, a space flight kind of accentuated the idea of a global community. You have about 50 minutes of daylight and about 35 of, uh, of night since the sun is up and down every hour and a half. But you choose whether you want it to be night or just to be dark. It's a strange concept, isn't it? And so you're up and working and the fact that it's dark doesn't matter and all the spaceship is lit up. But the best experiences that I've ever had is to turn all the lights off and put the computer lids down and to have a night experience of Earth. That's, uh, that's as good as it gets. Yeah, you can see, um, you can see city lights, you can see the pattern, you can, if you're high enough up, like the Hubble mission, you can see the whole United States. But the Hubble mission, which was around 370 statue miles, uh, you can see an entire continent clearly from there. So at night you can see the whole United States, really. And you can recognize clearly the pattern, you know, at New Orleans up there and, uh, and St. Louis and Kansas City and Miami. And Washington all the way to Boston is almost solid light, but you can pick out the intensities, you know. And so uh, Los Angeles and San Francisco and then on to Las Vegas, which until recently was the brightest. And the way the stars play with the city lights, it's almost a horizon that's not that distinct, so you're not always clear. You're looking at stars or looking at cities. It's kind of, it's not clear whether you're looking at stars or looking at city lights. When I do a night pass and do all the views I mentioned, then by golly, I am at night. The moon comes at you 18,000 miles an hour, and that is a reflection of the moon, 25,000 feet per second. Because it'll race across the ocean, or if it's you over land, um, it lights the river only in a very distinct place. It's racing at you at 18,000 miles an hour. The river is, you see, because the only part of the river you see is a reflection of the moonlight. The meteorites coming in, the shooting stars, they're called. I've seen uh, five or six of them simultaneously. That's, that's kind of thrilling. You're glad you saw them. It means they didn't hit you on the way in. And so you're looking at the world, you're looking at the star field, and you have these cosmic rays that are causing streaks. So that's pretty spectacular. And then you have the meteorites coming in. So you get the play between uh, the meteoroids entering the atmosphere and the cosmic rays in your eyeball. 
panda moon racing across the thing, you see, and you may look off and see the aurora going on at the same time as you're seeing the stars and the city lights going by. Now you see the aurora dancing pink and green, and it moves like mist coming off a morning pond. And then, uh, if you're lucky, you've evoked a free fall sensation, so you're falling, but you're not falling toward anything. So you're in the window and you're falling. Day and night changes, you know, an hour and a half, you experience a whole day and a whole night. About an hour and a half, you experience the whole thing in terms of winter and summer. I do look for the changing of the leaves out there. Uh, you see lots of hurricanes. I've seen 10 hurricanes in one mission. I've seen a huge number of hurricanes from space. I'm sure my sense of evolution, my sense of cosmic evolution, has no question that that has been intensified by, uh, by space flight and by um, what the Hubble does, star birth and star death and a thousand galaxies. There is no such thing as dark sky. Wherever you aim the telescope, there's another thousand galaxies you look at. You can't aim the Hubble anywhere, except there's another thousand galaxies. There is no dark sky anywhere. You are part of this great big process which is going on. Yeah, just part of the game.